Welcome again to the That's My Dad podcast. Got Rick Callahan here today. Rick is the most talented person I've ever met. How about that? What a, what an introduction to say wow. you're the most talented. But you know, you got a lot of talents in a lot of different areas. Okay. Uh, so you, first of all, Rick is a uh, children's minister. He's a conference speaker, does a lot of marriage conferences, children's conferences. He's a consultant for a lot of things, but he's also a, a college basketball coach of sorts, a character coach. Character for coach. College Sanford University basketball program. Um, musician. He played the guitar, the drums, whatever, a little bit of everything. Uh, an athlete. Rick is a, a former all-conference baseball player, longest wow. home run hitter I've ever seen, and uh, won, won the old man state basketball championship too <laughs> and he even tried a little bit of wrestling yeah that didn't go so well <laughs> yeah he, he's so this guy he's multi-talented uh he built, builds guitars on the side and, but we're going to talk to him today about uh, something that he's done an awful lot of and of course this is about fatherhood but we're going to talk about mentoring because you've done a ton of mentoring and want to hear some of your stories about that well, let's start out by just tell us a little bit about yourself and your, and your background. And then there's a little secret we'll let them in on just in a few minutes. <laughs> okay. So I grew up in Birmingham area, and, uh, and I, after I graduated from high school, I went to Sanford University, and I did get to play baseball there. Uh, while I was at Sanford, I met my wife, whose name is Carla. And uh, Carla just retired as a school teacher, mostly first grade all those years. And I have two daughters, Kari and Cassie. And uh, Kari's in her early 30s and Cassie's in her late 20s. All right. And you're on staff at a church. Yeah, I'm at Westwood Baptist Church, and uh, I'm the pastor of families at Westwood. And you've been in that role at a couple of different churches uh, through, through the years. How many years you? How many years have you been in ministry now? Let's see. This year it would be 42 years in ministry since I started. Ah, uh, you're getting old, man. I am getting old. <clears throat> so one of the things that I've noticed you've always done is you've had a tendency to, to take younger folks and kind of bring them along. And you've done that with me as well. And why is it that you – why is that important for us to do, for for – for us older guys to be taking younger guys under our wings and kind of bringing them along and helping them through the, to navigate life. Well, first of all, life is hard <laughs> and you need some help. Uh, there are some people in life that can answer questions that you have. And it's important to have those people that you trust. I know that when I grew up, uh, Scott, I had guys in my community that, uh, that my dad told me, Hey, you need to get to know these guys. Yeah. And those guys would pour into me. Some of those guys were ball coaches. Some of them were uh, people from church. Some of those guys were just friends that lived up and down the street close to us. And uh, all those guys uh, poured into my life, and they meant something to me. So you're just kind of returning that. You're kind of paying forward and returning what, what was given to you. Yeah, a little bit. I, the I think the thing is it's important for us to be givers. And uh, so for me to give back by spending some time with a younger guy, I think makes a difference in their lives, and it's good for me to be a part of that as well. Yeah. So you, there, there's an interesting story I want you to, to tell um, about some something your dad taught you about honesty. You sure I should tell that? I, well, I mean, you've been forgiven. You've okay. Oh, well, here's the deal. So uh, I need a little extra money. I had a baseball. I had a lot of baseballs, and there was this kid that uh, lived down the street from me. His name was George. And George collected baseball cards and all kind of baseball memorabilia. And he was younger than me. He was probably three years younger than me. And so George was just saying, man, he, he loved Babe Ruth. And he just really liked Babe Ruth. And he had some Babe Ruth cards and stuff like that. And I said, well, I've got a Babe Ruth baseball, autographed baseball. And he's like, crazy, man. That's awesome. I'd love to have a baseball. I said, man, I'll sell it to you for $10. And he said, I've got $10. And so I ran home, and I got a baseball, and I signed Babe Ruth on it, and I took it back to him. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, he gave me $10. So I'm thinking, great deal, you know. And uh, so uh, I didn't realize that the baseball had Dixie Youth on it as well. <laughs> but uh, So later that night, uh, we're at home, and my dad uh, get, gets a phone call from George's dad. Of course, I didn't know this. And 
this phone call, and Dad's like, mm-hmm, okay, mm-hmm, I'll take care of it. And Dad gets off the phone and says, uh, son, get in the car. And I'm like, what are we doing? And so he took me back to George's house, uh, and he made me apologize and tell the truth and give him back the money and let him keep the ball, too. Oh, so you lost on I lost you, you, I lost you it lost all. your investment in the whole Of course deal. then on the way home there was that long conversation about honesty, how important it was to treat people fairly and all of those kinds of things. Yeah, the things. conversations were the worst. <laughs> well, I mean, wouldn't you rather just take a whipping? Yeah, than yeah, just the, give me a whipping. I mean, you know, my grandfather, shoot, he would just talk and talk and talk and talk and I'm like, "Please just spank me. Just don't let Granny switch me." <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of that, you know, we, we, we kind of didn't start here because I didn't want to scare anybody off. I didn't want to embarrass you either, but okay. we are first cousins. We are. So it's, it's, uh, we're the recipient of a lot of generational blessings. That's true. And that's one of the things I want to talk about because okay. it's, it's kind of rare that, you know, to, to you, you've been in ministry and you've, you've literally impacted, I'm going to say thousands, and I don't think that's an exaggeration, thousands of people, whether it be through uh, speaking at conferences or one-on-one mentoring or leading a small group in your home or you, right now you're leading a, a men's group in your home and you're uh, the, the coaching thing at Sanford University, you're working with those basketball players. Right. So you've had a tremendous impact on literally thousands of people. And then I, you know, I was fortunate enough to open a, a boys ranch, Eagle Rock Ranch and we raised over 300 kids over there That's in incredible. you know 32 years of of ministry but we we were we were blessed to have wonderful grandparents that we share your your mom and my dad are siblings right but none of that great grandparents and so one of the things that happens generationally is that the 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 blessings that we pass down to our kids, get passed down to their kids, and get passed down. You're exactly right. We are very blessed to have good examples in our family. Um, I would call it a grace gift, a grace gift that God has given you and I that uh, some other people who have been on this podcast in the past uh, haven't really received those kind of grace Mm -hmm. gifts from their families. Uh, But you and I are unbelievably blessed blessed by the example of our uh, grandfather great-grandfather our fathers as well yeah and I think part of the part of what they taught us is that where much is given much is is required so you've given a, a lot through the years to other people and I'm not talking about money although you have but just time and I've tried to give a lot of time because we we were blessed with that tell me about your relationship with your dad yeah I'll tell you so my dad grew up kind of uh, in a tough situation, too, not because he wasn't taken care of by his parents, but they had nine kids in a two-bedroom house. Uh, he didn't grow up far from where I grew up, uh, but they just had a lot of kids, and his dad was a coal miner. His mom stayed at home and uh, took care of things. And, and so uh, I, I, best I can remember from having conversations with dad, somewhere around 13 years old, he actually, so he could get sleep at night and didn't have to sleep with three other brothers, uh, he, he went to a house down the street where he had a friend, and he basically stayed there, and he'd go home and eat, and he'd go back and stay there. Uh, of course, when he got old enough uh, in, out of high school, he went on to the Navy, got in the military for a few years. And, uh, but, man, I tell you what, uh, my dad was a really great dad. He, he did so many things right. Uh, he wasn't always sure of himself because uh, his dad was basically the provider. That was mm-hmm. his job. And my dad wanted to spend time with me. And uh, so we played a lot of ball together. Yeah. Uh, we went fishing a whole bunch. Uh, he spent a lot of time with me. Uh, my dad liked to sing uh, country music, uh, gospel music, and he always had friends that would play guitar, banjos, mandolins, all that kind of stuff. They'd come to the house, yeah. and they would sing, and I enjoyed watching them and being a part of that. Um, so, so I love my dad a whole lot. He got sick pretty early, uh, but uh, he was a really good dad, especially when I was young. Worked he, hard, too. Yeah, he worked at the railroad. Yeah, he worked for the railroad. He, he worked 11 to 7 uh, the whole time he worked. And so uh, 
what was interesting about that is uh, we were getting ready for bed and he was leaving to go to work. And when we get up in the morning, he was getting ready to go to school. He was coming in from work. Uh, the good thing about that is somewhere around 3 o'clock in the afternoon when we got home, he was home. And so he could do stuff with us in the afternoons. Yeah. Would you like to say something to uh, to, to your dad? I mean, he's passed now, but what would you say to oh, him? Oh, man. You know what? I'm so proud of you for being a dad that just took responsibility to be a good dad and a good husband and and a good person in the community, uh, a mentor and a coach to so many young guys. And, Dad, I'm so proud of you for, for being a Christian leader uh, and for being a guy that didn't give up on us and that encouraged us to be our absolute best. Okay. Wow. So you're a dad now. Yeah. You're a, d- a girl daddy. Yeah, I got two girls. Two girls. What do you girls mean to you? And I'll tell you what, Kari and Cassie, uh, once again, my wife and my girls are an incredible blessing. Um, A grace gift to me that humbles me. Um, I don't don't deserve having kids like I have. Um, It's nothing I've done. I mean, I've loved them and I've tried to do a good job, but... My girls are confident. Uh, they're leaders. They are smart. Uh, they're pretty. They are good friends to their friends. And when I watch them, I, I'm just so proud. So proud of how they love people. How they care. How how often did you and uh, your Family have dinner together. Oh man, well, it wasn't every night, but it was almost every night. It was a is a real priority at our house to have dinner together. Matter of fact, my wife's a really good cook, so I wasn't gonna miss dinner. And so, uh, but my girls would be at dinner as well. Of course, we had schedules. Both of my girls played high school sports, mm-hmm. uh, and so uh, and we had church. Hey, church can give you a lot of activities as well. Yeah, but we made it a priority to eat together. There were times where we eat out somewhere. Didn't matter where we ate as a family, we always had prayer together. It didn't matter if it was at Buffalo Wild Wings or if it was at a, a you know, McDonald's. We had prayer together. But when we were at home, we always uh, we always had conversation around the table. And if a friend was there with our girls, hey, we had the conversation with them. And we played a little game, went around the table, and we called it high low. So you would share your high from the day and your low from the day, and that would give us some discussion starters. And uh, our girls will tell you that we had a lot of theological discussions yeah. around the table, especially as they got to be teenage girls, and uh, they were dealing with issues at school and learning things from church. What do you hope that they'll say about you one day? Uh, I, I hope they would say that, uh, that I was a good dad, I was kind, tenderhearted, I was not harsh. Uh, I hope they'll say they had fun with me, that we laughed a lot, and that we enjoyed being with each other, that we liked playing together. Um, those are the kind of things. I hope they'll say I'm definitely the spiritual leader of the home and that uh, I, love my, I love my wife and I uh, set a good example for them and the love that I showed her. What do you think, is particularly with girls, what, what are some special things that you, that you do? I know you used to take them on dates and things like that and yeah. when they were younger. So what, what, what's kind of interesting? What's so, about girls? Yeah, so when they were growing up, um, I, I had the privilege for several years to take them to school in the morning because their mom was a school teacher. She had to leave before I did in the morning. And so I would take the girls to school. Uh, I would take certain days that I would leave a little early and we'd go eat breakfast somewhere. And there was a couple of really, pla- really cool places that they liked to go and eat breakfast, which is just good old country breakfast. And, and so we would have those times and at those places, there were usually men who I knew that were eating there too, and they would see how I interacted with other people. And uh, those men got to know my daughters and expect to see us there on Thursdays. So okay. uh, those kind of things were cool. Other than that, we kept an open uh, relationship. I feel like my girls were always able and still are able to approach me, ask me questions, share open thoughts with me. 
uh, I would be really surprised if they kept stuff from me on purpose. So you you spent a lot of time mentoring those guys at Sanford, the yeah. basketball players. What what are you trying to accomplish with them? Now these guys are eighteen to twenty three years old, somewhere in there. A couple of them twenty four, and uh, a Division One basketball is an interesting deal. There's a lot of pressure, uh, and this team is no different. Uh, but there are a lot of young men in Division One sports that grew up without a father. Mm. And the only person that's really poured into them over the years has been either their mom, their grandma, or a coach. Mm. And so uh, a lot of these guys are only recognized for their skills. And so my role was to come into the team and to just love on these guys, to be an encourager to them, to teach them what it means to be a man of integrity, to be a man of honesty, to be a man with a great work ethic, to be a man that – does what he says and says what he does. A man that that will push his limits even further than he would ever imagine. A man that can have some dreams and visions beyond basketball. Most of these guys, all they're thinking about is basketball. I mean, that's it. Right then. And all of them will play NBA. But guess what? Even if they play NBA by about 30, 35 years old, guess what? They're going to be mm-hmm. doing life. And so uh, part of my role is to help prepare them for life. Now, what's great is – I get to pour into the lives of the coaches as well and do some training on both ends. And so now we have a situation where the coaches and I are on the same page. Let's help prepare these young men for life. And in the meantime, let's have a great time playing basketball and teach these guys to be the highest skilled basketball players they can possibly be. And so uh, in in the midst of that, I get to share the gospel, get to talk about God, and uh, I get to spend time with these guys. So they've been to my house. They yeah. played on the lake with me. They've ridden in boats. They've fished with me. We've been out to eat at a lot of restaurants. By the way, I took them all out to eat last year, and you pay for that meal. That's a big meal. And, uh, <laughs> and, but we get opportunities. Most recently, I had a young man come to me and say, tell me about God. I don't know anything about God. I've grown up. I'm 23 years old. What is this God thing about? Wow. We, uh, you, as you know, we have a, a custom here of getting a little video from your family. Mm. And there was no earthly way we were going to get everybody that you have mentored through the years. But we got just one or two. Okay. And uh, they're going to be added to your family. But I want people to pay attention to what you're, particularly what, your wife and kids say about you in this video. Okay. Hello, honey. We both know that marriage isn't easy and raising children sure isn't. But Rick, you have done your very best to make it easier. You have loved all three of us girls very well. You have gone over and beyond to make sure our needs and even our wants were met. We have also always felt very protected and secure, not just because of your huge guns, but because of your calm and strong presence in our lives. We trust you even when you go running around our house or camper in your undies with your big (laughs) stick to catch whoever or whatever is outside. We have traveled all over the world, whether it be for vacations or mission trips. We have traveled all over the U.S. pulling a camper, and we have too many crazy camping stories to even tell. From riding on a dog sled atop an Alaskan glacier, zip lining through Belizean jungles, swimming with five-foot stingrays in the clear blue Caribbean, hiking in the Grand Canyon, sharing the gospel in the Ukraine, sharing the gospel in Belize and many other places, to fishing for crappie on our lake, you have made life fun and exciting for our girls and for me. We've done ministry together for 40 years, and I have seen firsthand what an incredible impact you have had on hundreds of lives, probably thousands. You stood beside me and encouraged me the three years I battled cancer, and I know that was very difficult on many levels. Thank you for being a man of integrity and the spiritual leader of our home. Thank you for being faithful, for loving us unconditionally, and for giving and forgetting just as Christ does. You are a wonderful best friend, and I love you very much. Hey, Dad, it's your fun kid. Um, Just wanted to hop on here and say how much I love and appreciate you. Uh, One of my favorite things about you is how goofy and silly you and I have always been able to be together. 
Um, one of my favorite memories of us is on the flight to San Francisco. We were in the very back seat of the plane and mom and Kari were two seats in front of us. And, and you and I were being loud and goofy and, and the two men in front of us were definitely annoyed, but we were laughing so hard that you were doing your smoker's laugh and you had your like airplane neck pillow over your head and you had another one here and then you were like acting like one was a shark and it was just it's one of my favorite memories and it's the picture of you that pops up on my phone when you call and it makes me laugh every time um but aside of just having fun and being goofy together you've always been an encourager whether I was playing sports or um, you were teaching me how to do a new trick on the trampoline or we were out playing basketball in the freezing cold at night um, or just in, in the work life and the business world, which is a lot different um, for me than kind of what you and mom do. You've always listened and you've always encouraged, but you've also always led by example to, to do what is right no matter what um, and to keep trust in the Lord no matter what. And so... Um, that just means a lot to me on top of the fun and goofy relationship that we have. I'm probably one of the very few kids in this world who can say their dad led them to Christ, but also got to baptize her. Um, and you got to baptize like half of my friends. So that's a really cool story. And um, it's neat to just see how you've continued doing ministry, whether that's at church or in an Uber ride in Seattle trying to talk to our Uber driver or um, dealing with the Sanford basketball guys. It's just been a real testimony to see you make much of Jesus wherever you go. Um, and the Lord's been faithful in that, that it's encouraging for those of us who look up to you because we know that if we make much of Jesus wherever we go, we'll be blessed also. Love you. Hey dad, um, first of all, I am just so grateful for you for how you have led and loved our family um, and just taught us so much about the Lord and scripture and how you've pointed us to him in so many different areas of our lives. Um, I think of you as a protector. You, um, even as a little girl, when I was afraid to go to sleep by myself in my room and you did karate on all the invisible monsters in mm -hmm. my bedroom, um, and then just how you've carried that on, even as I'm an adult and living in my own house and how you've um, made sure that I have everything that I need to be safe and well cared for. Um, and then I also am just so grateful for how you have encouraged, um, me to follow the Lord's calling on my life, whether that be in ministry, um, or in foster care or just in different friendships and college and all the different things that you have, um, encouraged and supported me and talked through so many different things with me um and then also how you've just made them happen for um a lot of different things and how you've gotten to be a part of um my ministry and how i've gotten to be a part of your ministry over the years i'm just so grateful for those opportunities um there's just so kind of the lord to give me a chance to serve alongside my dad um and so i'm thankful for how you've taught me in those areas as well and then um, just another thing that I'm just so grateful for is how you have been so much fun, how we've gone on so many cool trips and um, how you have been a jokester and a silly dude just all the time um, and how much fun you make everything. Um, I'm just so grateful for all the um, men and women and kids that you have impacted um, throughout your ministry and through your life. I'm just so proud of um, how you lead people and love people so well. And I love getting to be your daughter, and I'm so grateful, and I love you so much. Brother Rick Callahan is not only the best boss ever, but he is an amazing friend. He is a credible leader who serves not only the families in their church, but the children as well. He is a great encourager, and I am blessed to have been under his supervision for so long, and I'm also blessed to be calling him my friend.
Hey, Brother Rick, I so appreciate the way you teach and lead and set an example to the people around you of how we can trust God no matter what. One of my favorite memories from working in ministry with you was during Preteen Extreme when I played Joy from Inside Out. You totally let me interrupt one of your sermons just to sing with the kids and teach them a wise man built his house on the rock. Thank you so much, Brother Rick. I appreciate Brother Rick because he sing, he sung a funny song. He sings funny songs like uh, Goldilocks and the Three Bears backwards. And he has a box guitar he sings with it. And uh, he plans fun things for the children at the church like uh, the Man Up Obstacle Course where he had to try and race through it to see who was the fastest. And he did a dodgeball thing in the um the back of the church and um he listened to me when i was telling him about a friend who doesn't know christ and he let me have a bible to give to her and uh that's why i appreciate brother rick Here's why I appreciate Brother Rick. He's an awesome leader. He's always so nice to the boys. Like, this one time when we were doing Man Up, he walked into the room and he was like, you're the only boys who can do this. Yeah. I always felt, I always feel so appreciated around Brother Rick and he's such an amazing person. What I like about Brother Rick is so he's so sweet and he's so funny and um, I'm glad he teaches us on Wednesday nights and he plays the guitar. I love you, Brother Rick. Mwah. That's awesome. That's awesome. <clears throat> and we could have gone on and on, Rick. I mean, That's we, incredible. We, uh, you know, I communicate with one of your, your guys, Justin Coleman. Yeah. He was a bas really great basketball player and, is, and just a, a phenomenal person now. And he attributes a lot of his success to you as well. So we, we just didn't have time to – we could have gone on and on. That could have been the whole program. But a lot of guys appreciate you, including myself. And uh, you're, you've you've changed the world. Thank we need, you. need more people like you. Well, it's not on my own power. Uh, it's a privilege. You've been a blessing to me, and thanks for sharing your story with us. You're welcome. It's going to inspire somebody. That'll conclude this episode of That's My Dad podcast, where we're inspiring fathers to be, be great dads, and where we're seeking to break the cycles of generational fatherlessness. Thanks, and we'll see you next week.